concerns are expressed from time to time that Transparency International's corruption perceptions index uh, is not robust enough. What do you say to that? From my experience, uh, some people say, well, this is perception, this is not reality. From my experience, perception is reality. I mean, if you take that index and you compare what is going on reality, you will find that there's, there's a, a quite clear correspondence between one and the other. That's on, on uh, my experience. I, I'm not an expert on, on these issues. But Klitgar, who certainly is, and uh, he's a scientist, has just presented in this paper I mentioned uh, some weeks ago a comparison of the CPI, the Transparency International Corruption Perception Index, with six other indexes that work with hard data or try to work with hard data or have different approaches to uh, corruption. The conclusion of Klitgar's research is that the CPI is quite accurate to reality and not very different to uh, the most serious uh, surveys or res research that are running on. I mean, you know the, the contra-argument to that. It's uh, an argument that David White makes. Uh, what he says is that the index is not objective, because it can't be. It's subjective in that it merely measures the impressions of a large group of obs observers and experts around the world selected by transparency for the purposes of the survey. Now, his book was published in 2015. Has the index become any less subjective since then? Yes, we are, we've done serious efforts to that. We changed the methodology some years ago, not because we uh, recused the previous methodology, but because we tried to be more accurate. And it is not true that Transparency International selects the people that are going to be surveyed. We go to each country and we pick the most serious uh, independent companies that have nothing to do with Transparency International. We bring that information and we apply our formula to that and that generates a result. So uh, yes, we are doing all the time serious efforts to try to improve the CPI. But I would say that up to today, it's a very good indicator. Of course, if you never an index can give you an exactly and totally accurate uh, expression of what is happening there. For example, uh, if you think in Uruguay, Uruguay is a country in Latin America that has always been very well ranked in the CPI. And if you go to Uruguay, you will find that the police is clean, that the citizens are not involved in corrupt uh, practices or culture. But uh, Montevideo is a safe haven in order to move money on the financial market. And that doesn't appear necessarily in the CPI, because we cannot look at all the aspects of the problem. And I can transplant that example to here. I mean, now New Zealand, Denmark, are uh, the cleanest countries in the world. But if we look at what is going on here on the financing of politics and uh, the financial market, uh, money laundering, acquisition of property, etc., we will find that there are several issues of corruption also here that probably are not reflected when the CPI brings these results to the public.